What's up everybody and welcome back to the Gaming Dojo. My name is Mr. Tech Ninja and today I'm bringing you a quick rundown of Moira. So Moira is a great all-around character. Uh, Moira has abilities that allow her to not only deal out health, but deal out some serious damage based off the characters that she's fighting. She's usable in situations to help heal your team, to help carry them through a, a team fight, but also to pick off any stragglers from the enemy team that would get out of position uh, or put themselves in a situation where Moira is going to severely capitalize on it. So Biota Grasp has, has two, two different motions. We have a left... A left click and a right click. Uh, as far as what the left click and right click does, left click is for healing, right click is for damage. So the left click on the Biotic Grasp provides 65 healing per second and 65 lingering healing over four seconds. Now we're going to explain later why that's important to know what the lingering healing is, um, but there's a specific strategy of how you should be healing with Moira. So the left click, you'll see a, a yellow stream come out. This stream is about 15 to 20 meters long and allows you to heal um, over time as well as a quick burst of healing. Now if you'll notice on the right there, that is your gauge of how much you have left. Now to refill that gauge, it refills over time as you can see, uh, but the other way to refill that gauge is to hold right click. So right click is the biotic grasp uh, for damage. This does about 20 meters worth of range and roughly 50, 50 damage per second and heals Moira herself 20 heals per second. So as you're right clicking on somebody, not only are you refilling this gauge here on the right, but you are also refilling your health bar uh, up to 20, um, 20 healing per second. That's that's huge in the midst of a, of a team fight to be able to throw out healing to your team, potentially throw out an orb and we'll go over that next and then right click on somebody that it makes you very hard to kill. Um, and given her mobile abilities that she has, uh, it gives her a, a chance to really keep herself alive and keep that team alive. So let's talk about the biotic orb. Biotic orb is a, uh, like, it's, like it's called, it's an orb that comes out and you have options to choose healing or damage. Now the healing orb will do 65 healing up to 300 heal, healing total. Uh, the damage orb will do 50, Per second up to 200 total. So the different orbs are categorized by their colors. Yellow of course will be healing. Purple of course is a soul-sucking abyss that we send towards people. Um, both of these are super helpful and again we'll talk over strategies of, of how we can combine some of these skills and make ourselves extremely dangerous. Now as you can see it definitely has a, a, a good lifespan um, of how long that it stays up. And I would say it's roughly about 10 seconds that that thing stays out there, um, but will disappear over time. Now, as you're healing your team um, and you're doling out healing, you will see that that healing orb will actually shrink. And as it shrinks down, um, at some point it will disappear once it hits that 300 healing mark. Now, Fade is one of her mobile, is, well, is her mobile ability, and it's super effective. So let's say I'm in the midst of a fight here both of these guys suddenly pop up and there's there's really, if I have to run away, if I count one, two, there's two seconds where I'm wide open, one, two, before I even get back to the other side. So that's crossing a doorway, one, two. So her ability allows her to go in, invincible and invisible more or less and disappear over to wherever you wanna go. Now the directions are completely up to you. You hold WSAD to go whatever direction that you want to go. So if I want to go to the left, I don't even have to look over there and I'll hit the button. Now, as you can see, we go about 15 meters. And the, the good part behind that is it comes back up quickly. And that, that 15 meters is, is so helpful where we can disappear off to the side. You can give a little hop at the end of it to even get more range. So if we, if we let ourselves dash a little bit and we hit the space bar at the very end, we can get a lot of range. It's a lot of range and you can really disappear up to wherever you need to go or back to your team. Uh, the cool part with this is, is you can kind of go around corners too. So if I hold down W and I look whatever direction I want to go, I can come out this door and go off to the left. So it's it's extremely useful. Let's say I want to come out this door and go over into that, uh, that doorway there. I can definitely do that. And then I can start doing damage to people around me. 
So super, super useful. Uh, the other skill that she has is her Coalescence. So Coalescence is her ultimate ability. It does about 70 damage per second and 100, 140 healing per second, as well as healing yourself 50 heals per second over time. Um, this is super, super useful. It shoots out a large beam and you can tell it does quite a bit of damage, um, especially to squishies. Um, but not really the sole purpose of what Coalescence is there for. And, and we'll talk about strategies of use um, here coming up. So let's talk about how we would use these. So Biotic Grasp is, is super, super useful. So let's, let's come down here to our teammates that are getting damaged. If you'll notice, this is the best strategy towards healing. I'm going to give a quick click over that person. And doing this, I just gave them 130 health. So the way this is working is this first little blast gives 65 health, and then they're getting 65 more health over four seconds afterwards. As you can tell, I can really keep them alive without using so much resource. And this goes the same way of just going between people, right? So if we've got a team up, we'll just do a quick burst across the team, being as we're supposed to be sitting in the back line. And we can really keep these guys alive. And all I'm doing is quick clicks. Now, I've, I've run out of resource. So what would I do in this situation now that I'm out of resource? So one thing that I really like to do is called staging an orb. So when we have a situation where we have a roof like this or a side-by-side -side wall like this, what you want to do is you want to get your heal orb out and you want to bounce it. As you can see, I can sit here and bounce that between those guys to get healing, and I can come over here and right-click to really get my resource back. And then I'll disappear to come back behind my team, and I can get them back up to where they need to be. And again, we want to just do bursts. We can slowly get them back up to where they should be. And as you can see, the damage that the bots are putting out is not enough to, to counteract how much healing that they're getting. And as you can see, the, the healing over time that they get, that 65 healing, really cuts off the amount of, of damage that they can actually do to the characters while we're sending damage orbs down the field. So we can continue to do this here. You really shouldn't be showing, throwing damage orbs unless your team is safe, kind of like they are right here, where I have two teammates that are specifically alive. I'm out of resource again, so I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna throw that orb, let them get healing get some resource back, fade back, and I'm gonna come back to my team and I'm gonna keep on healing. This also means that as they're moving forward, that orb will stay with them. And being as I've got it staged inside of this small area, that my team moving forward can still have that healing. Now you wanna make sure that you throw that orb towards the direction that your team is going. So if I you know, send out healing like this and they're heading that direction, then I've, I've given them an orb to run through and, and get heals on as they move into whatever position that they're trying to move on. So let's talk about damage. So Moira's right click is useful, especially for people that are out of position. You can tell it, it moves quickly. Um, it does take a little bit of time to really kill somebody off. So how, how do we make it a little bit quicker in case we have to get into a team fight? That's a great question. So let's throw the damage orb. Now when we throw this damage orb, we're also going to right click. Watch the difference. The damage orb's out, and we've thrown that right click much faster. And if we've got somebody that's out of position, and they're taking that level of damage from us, you have an entire team that's going to be with you as well that can help you punish that character. So what you're doing is providing extra DPS for the DPS characters to have some assistance in really clearing a team out. So let's talk about what other damage capabilities we have. So let's say we want to throw a... We, we've got side view of, of the enemy team. We throw a damage orb and we use our coalescence. You can see how quickly this just tears through people this way. And this really allows you to, to get a lot of damage out. Now, the sole purpose behind that is definitely not to do damage. And the same thing goes for the other orb. So let's say I want to... I'm going to... I'm gonna, break my rules here and hold it down which you definitely can do if your team is getting really really damaged but i i i if you're over here just clicking and you've got a good shield tank the odds are that you're going to be able to keep these alive with just doing these little burst heals now as far as healing goes how do i use the same healing tactic for my coalescence so let's get uh let's get our coalescence back up here and i will walk you through how that works 
All right, as you can see, I've got my coalescence back, so let's talk about healing with it. So we're gonna throw out an orb. This will heal you. Just to get a baseline here of how the orb is doing on healing. Now the orb does quite a bit of healing, as you can see, it really keeps people alive, but how do we capitalize on that like we do the damage orb? So let's throw the healing orb and coalescence. So I'm gonna give it a little distance and coalesce, and you can see that they immediately are back up to where they need to be. It is a massive amount of healing, and you have to remember that this is being combined with other things. So as far as combining these two, if we got values for it, your coalescence is doing damage at 70 damage per second, right? Well, your your right click or your orb um, is, or sorry, that's not a right click. Your orb itself does 50. So if we are doing coalescence of 70 and you're doing a biotic grasp of 50, that means you're doing 120 damage per second. Now, as a healer, that's insane. We're doing a lot of damage and, and we're allowing ourselves to also be able to heal the team. So there's, there's some huge benefits to be had there. Now, if we're healing the team, it's even higher. Coalescence does 140 heals per second and heals yourself for 50. And the left click does 65 healing per second and 65 lingering healing. So overall, we're doing in one second, we've got 130 coming just from the left click and we've got 140 coming from healing. That's 280 healing that's coming through there. So there's, there's a huge amount of value in providing that for a healing purpose and not so much for damage. What I see a lot of Moiras do is misunderstand the purpose behind their damage. If I'm wanting to do damage to other characters, when I use my Coalescence, I'm going to be using it like this, where I can Coalescence through my teammate and be doing damage to the person behind it. So I'm, I'm keeping my teammate alive, but I'm doing damage on the other side of it too, and that's... That's super, super effective to keep your team alive, provide some extra damage where it's needed, and really push into a team fight, initiate, and, and complete out a team fight. So let's talk about fading. So the way that fading should work is nine times out of 10, you do not want to fade into a straight line. I would always suggest we do a little bit of a curve. The reason for that is, as a person that plays Roadhog myself, if you're fading in a specific direction, and I know the distance that you're going, I can send my hook to where I, I assume that you're going to land out based off of the distance that you're supposed to go. So if I go like this and he's sitting over there, there's an odds that he's going to be able to throw his hook right here. It's just like Tracer. And there's tons of videos online if you, if you want to fact check me where you can see people like Tracers and Moiras that when they disappear that they get snagged by road hogs or they get you know headshot as soon as they come out of it. And that's solely based off the fact that you went into a straight line instead of giving yourself some sort of difference in pattern, right? So, I mean, you can draw almost a whole entire circle here. So you might as well take advantage of that. You you, you really should, as, as, as a mobile character, you wanna keep yourself moving around um, and, and really out of, of reach of, of those characters. So let's talk about positioning. Where should Moira be in the group? Moira is a close backline of character where she's got to sit kind of up on the team the reason behind that is she has to be able to reach her team. This is usually the, the, the range that I will sit back. The reason being, if someone comes up and I can see that they're going to steamroll this team, I can come back over here, get more distance, and start this throwing orbs. Of course, you want to send a healing orb through, not so much a damage orb. Um, but this allows you to, to have some distance away from your team. We can still kind of reach them from here if we allow ourselves to forward a little bit. But being able to reach to the other guy is is not guaranteed. And that's super important that we, we understand that it's going to be hard to reach over to him. So being mobile is, is great. Getting up with our teammates and fighting is awesome. But at the exact same time, we need to be making sure that we stay in the back line and heal. Damage is not Moira's sole purpose, nor is it her, her main purpose. You should be healing. But this allows you to pick off people and, and provide assistance to the team when your team is already safe. So in the case where we talk about picking off a, a side character. So let's say, you know, my team is, is dealing with the two characters in front of them, right? I'm keeping them alive. And I see this dude on the left over here, out of position, away from his team. I'm going to throw an orb over here. I'm going to right click on him and I've cleared him out. Now my team can move in with a coalescence healing. So I can get them back up and ready for a, for a team fight, throw my co my healing orb, get them completely up for the coalescence, line them up with the other enemies, 
and we are at this point pushing in for the team fight and I'm assisting on top of the damage that they already perceive. So there is a lot of healing that you're going to be doling out here that you can really help save your team with, as well as do the damage that is required to, to initiate and complete a team fight and get you all those nice juicy dubs. So with that, um, I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I am going to cut over to some clips of me playing Moira uh, on, a, on a couple of matches with, with some, some music overlaid. And, and in this way, you can kind of see how I am using these tactics that I've showed you to help keep my team alive, get gold healing, have a large amount of healing consistently every time. So again, I want to thank everybody for watching the video. Uh, and hope that you guys come and meet me back again here in the dojo in the next video. Take care.